There we go. Uh, oh, let's do the old joke again. Good old. And Cirque. A hockey player of math. Oh, you know what? I see uh, north, east, south, west. So let's draw a compass. Of mass 72 is skating due north, collides another player skating due south. There's a collision. So this means the sum of all the momentum before the collision equals the sum of all the momentum after the collision. Do you have to write that down, Riley? No. I generally, that's my starting point. I, you may notice what I try and teach you in any approach is, hey, here's a way to start and then get your brain thinking and moving. I try and give a standard approach to start, and then we branch off into all the different uh, ways we can go about it. Uh, and then I ask myself a question. I say, before the collision, what was moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? Both, stuck together or separate? Separate. So before the collision, Tara, it's going to be the momentum of the first guy, initial. The momentum of the second guy, initial. Bam! They collide. After the collision, what's moving? Both. Stuck together or separate? I'm pretty sure it's separate because if they were stuck together and they gave me the velocity of the first guy, the second guy would have the same velocity and McKenna, that'd be kind of a silly question. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be momentum one final and momentum two final. Momentum is what times what? Well, it's going to be, I think I need to divide this up, mass 1 V1 initial plus mass 2 V2 initial equals mass 1 V1 final plus mass 2 V2 final. What are they asking me to find? Looks like they're asking me to find that. How would I get that by itself? I think, I think, oh, can I get a little arrow here? Well, a little thingy. Uh, I think I'm going to uh, minus this over and then divide by mass 2. I think if I'm doing the math right, and I'm pretty sure I am because the math I'm pretty good at, uh, V2 final is going to be the whole left-hand side, M1, M1, M1. Nice try, Mr. Duke. M1 V1 initial plus M2 V2 initial. The amount of momentum you had at the beginning, take away whatever momentum mass 1 had, all divided by mass 2. Now, I'm going to have to be very, very cautious, Jordan, my friend, because I see the words north and south there is a direction change. That means, that means I'm going to have to let one direction be positive and one direction be negative. Matt, do you want me to let north be positive or south be positive? No. Okay, we'll be consistent then. So, that means if I get a negative answer as a direction, that's going to mean south. If I get a positive answer as a direction, that's going to mean north. I'm visualizing this. I think what happened is this. Bang! I think. So I, I think he bounced back the second guy. I, I have a feeling I might get a part. Well, let's find out. Uh, V2 final. It's going to be mass 1, 72, 7.5, plus mass 2, 65, negative 8.1, south, minus mass 1, 72, negative 1.3. Yeah, I'm going to get a minus minus in there. That's okay. The nature is taking care of it. The universe is not going to explode. All divided by mass 2, 65. Final answer? I have no idea. I think it's going to be positive if I'm doing it in my head, but let's see. Bracket. 72 times 7.5 plus 65 times negative 8.1 minus 72 times negative 1.3. All of that in brackets. Let me double check. Did I type that in right? Yes, yes, yes. All divided by 65. 
Do you get 1.647, uh, 1.65 or 1.6? Yeah, I'll go 1.65. Positive? So it's going to be 1.65 meters per second. Direction? North. How would I get, first of all, if you got that, you get three out of three. Otherwise, how would I give out part marks? I would give you a half mark for that and a half mark for the direction. I would probably give you a half mark if I saw that line right there, a half mark if I saw that line right there, a half mark if I saw that line right there, and a half mark if I saw that line right there. Something like that. You know what? Here's what I think happened. Yeah, these two guys bumped into each other. This is a good hockey body check where both of them then ended up bouncing backwards in opposite directions that they came in. I've seen that happen before. I can visualize that. Let's keep going. Oh, sorry. You got it? Awesome. Uh, a 52 gram, oop, careful grams. Tara, they're not going to get me. 52 grams is, I've done that a bunch now this year. Uh, not 0 0.52, 0.052 kilograms, right? Because there's 1,000 grams in a kilogram. It's dropped, and it hits the ground at 8.2 meters per second. Check. After impact, it rebounds upwards. Ah, I see a direction change. I'm, as I visualize this, I'm seeing down, bouncing down and then heading back up. I think I'm going to have to let... Uh, one be positive, one be negative, and they want me to find the average force of impact. Okay. How the heck can I do that? Did they mention a time of impact in this question? Then this is a job for impulse. Impulse. I think what I can say is force times change in time, and yes, once again, I got lazy and didn't write the delta in front of the T equals impulse. Really what I'm going to say is this, force times change in time equals final minus initial. Really what I'm going to say is force times change in time equals mv final minus m V initial, and some of you may have jumped right to that line, and that's perfectly fine, Sam, if you were able to reason all that, but this is my reasoning to get there. By the way, you'll notice I didn't treat this as a collision because uh, although there sort of is, the ball's hitting the earth, they didn't give me the mass of the earth. I, I, I'm not looking at the overall momentum of the system. I'm looking at just the one object, the ball, which is why this is not a job for conservation of momentum, which looks at more than one object. This is a job for, hey, what's the change in momentum on that one object? Uh, I think the force then is going to be M V final minus M V initial divided by T, but there's going to be a vector. Uh, do you want to let up be positive or down be positive? I don't care. Up, since that what we've, that's what we've done all year? Okay, I'm good with that. So uh, if I plug in numbers, it's going to be mass 0 0.052, V final up 6.2, minus mass 0 0.052, V initial not 8.2. Ah, it's heading down. All divided by. I don't know why I suddenly went black there. Sorry, let me rewrite this in red so I'm color consistent. And then I can label the part marks in black. What did I say? 0 0.052, 6.2 minus 0 0.052, negative 8.2. Please excuse this interruption, but if we could have Mrs. Thompson and Ms. Kessler. All divided by, yoink. Uh, 0.15. If I get a positive force, what direction is that? <coughs> if I get a positive, up. If I get a negative force, what direction is that? Down. 
Hey, let's plug and chug. Let's see if I get a positive or a negative answer. I think positive, because I think the whole force is going to be up, because I think the ground has to apply an upwards force to bring the ball to a stop and apply an upwards force to get it to go back up again. I think that ties in with Newton's laws and stuff that I've learned already. So this is good. Uh, 0 0.052 times 6.2 minus 0 0.052 times negative 8.2, close bracket, divided by 0.15. You get an answer of, uh, you get an answer of, oh, 4.992, almost exactly 5 Newtons. 4.99 Newtons up, or if you said 5 newtons up, 5.0, I'd be okay with that if you went to 2 sig figs, because technically I should go to 2 sig figs. Is that okay? Uh, three marks for that. In terms of part marks, oh, I'd probably do a half mark for the 4.99, a half mark for the direction, and then I'd probably go a half mark if I saw that, a half mark if I saw that, a half mark if I saw that, and I'd probably give you a half mark for cluing in that it was impulse. Something like that. Oh, B. Tanisha, what's B asking me to find? You never asked us this, Mr. Do- I know. What's B asking me to find? Hey, folks, what's change in anything? You know what? I'm pretty sure if they want me to find the change in kinetic energy, it's going to be kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial. And I seem to recall that kinetic energy is a half mv squared, so it'll be a half mv final squared minus a half mv initial squared. It's going to be a half 0 0.052. V final was uh, 6.2 squared. Mr. Duick, you call, oh yeah, up positive, Mr. Duick? Okay, minus a half, 0 0.052. V initial is 8.2 squared. Mr. Duick, shouldn't that be negative? Energy, scalar or vector? Energy, scalar or vector? It's a scalar, and besides, can you see if I did put the negative there, when I squared it, what would happen to the negative anyhow? It would vanish. Oh, that's one of the reasons energy is a scalar. Point 0.5 times point zero five two times 6.2 squared minus point 0.5 times point zero five two times 8.2 squared. Looks right. Negative point 0.75 joules. One mark. What's the negative telling me here? A direction? No. An energy loss. The ball lost energy. I thought, Mr. Duke, I thought energy was conserved. Total energy is conserved. Kinetic energy isn't conserved. In fact, I can tell you where that 0.75 joules went into. The ball itself was deformed when it hit. You've seen slow motion videos of a ball bouncing or being hit by a baseball somewhere in your life, those high speed videos, and you notice that the ball deforms. That's a force times a distance. That took some energy. That took some work. Some of the energy went into deforming the ball. Probably some of the energy also went into deforming the earth. That was kind of fun, Mr. Yeah, turn the page. Ooh, the ballistic pendulum. Wow. We said in this question, there is a collision and there is a change in height, change in speed. There is a job for momentum. There is a job for conservation of energy. So I'm going to do the collision first. Before the collision, what's moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? Momentum of mass one initial. Wham, they collide, they stick together. It's going to be M1V1 equals M1 plus M2V final. The final speed they move off at after the, move off at after the collision is going to be M1V1 divided by M1 plus M2. It's going to be 0 0.008 
430 divided by 0.758. I think that's what you get if you add the two masses together. I hope, I think, I hope, I think, I hope. 0 0.008 times 430 divided by 0.758. And I get them moving off together at 4.538. I'm going to write 4.5, but I'll, is that right? But I'll keep this number on my calculator. So I'm going to go 4.5 meters per second. And now they swing up. And there's a direction change, and it's an arc. We want a scalar approach now. This is a job for conservation of energy. Kinetic initial, potential initial, equal kinetic final plus potential final. Although I think I can go like that and like that. It's starting out on ground level. We can put ground level wherever we want. And it's going to uh, come to a stop. It's going to be a half mass of both v initial squared equals mass of both g h final. But conveniently, the masses cancel anyways. Uh, the final height is going to end up being, hello, uh, v, uh, vi squared divided by 2g. It's going to be uh, 4.5 squared divided by 2 times 9.8 except it's not 4.5. I'm going to use this number that was on my calculator. That squared divided by bracket 2 times 9.8. Please tell me we get a good answer. Oh, 1.05? 1.05 meters. That gets you 4 out of 4. Otherwise, I would probably go something like this. One mark if I saw that guy. Probably one mark if I saw that equation. I would go... Uh, Half mark if I saw that, one whole mark if I saw that, and a half mark for the answer. Does that add to four? I think it does. Something like that. And now, let's reverse this whole procedure, shall we? Uh, now, instead of me telling you the initial speed and say, find the final height, now, Tara, I'm going to tell you this, find that. Once you know that, once you know that, find that. There's our procedure. So we're going to start out with energy and work our way backwards to momentum. We're going to start out with kinetic initial plus potential initial equals kinetic final plus potential final. We're going to say nyet, nyet. We're going to go a half m v initial squared equals m g h final once again the masses cancel now you could have if you wanted to andrew simply have looked at this and rearrange this to get the v by itself if you didn't want to walk through all this but i'm showing you if they'd given me this question cold turkey this would have been my starting point trying again as i said earlier a standard approach uh, i think we're going to get then uh v initial is going to be two times g times the final height square rooted it's going to be the square root of 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 9.8. Uh, v initial equals, running out of room here, Mr. Duke. 2 times 9.8 times 0.1. Square root of that, holy smokes. One point, that's a complete fluke making up numbers, and it worked out evenly. I'll take that. This time, Mr. Camozzi did not make up that question and go through all the work of making it work out evenly. I just fluked into it. Yes! Uh, meters per second. Now what? Well, they must have collided, so we must have had the sum of all the initial momentum equals the sum of all the final momentum. In fact, the momentum of the bullet coming in equaled the momentum of both going out. It's going to be mass 1 V initial equals M1 plus M2 V final. V initial is going to be M1 plus M2 V final divided by M1. 
it's going to be running out of room here, so I'm going to start plugging in numbers. Bracket, 0 0.007. Do you guys like that? 007 for the bullet? Huh? Eh? Huh? Come on! Give me some... Okay, fine. Uh, plus 1.5 times 1.4 divided by 0 0.007. Do you get 301.4 or 301? Yeah? 301 meters per second. If you got that right, four out of four. Otherwise, I'd probably go something like this. One mark for that, one mark if I saw that, one mark for that, and I'd probably go, oh, one mark if I saw that. So that makes this total quiz out of uh, eight plus four, 12 plus three, fi uh, it's out of 15. Can you give yourself a lovely score at the top out of 15, please? Last day we did a review of trig. Were there any questions that you wanted me to go over that you were going, holy schmoly, I can't figure out how the heck to get this? Four C and D. Four C and D? And all of part two. And all of part, oh, okay. Four C and D. Okay. Four C, is, you know, I'll do D and I'll let you try C. Okay. Uh, there's my angle. That ten opposite adjacent to hypotenuse. Uh, I totally agree. What about that X? I totally agree. <coughs> Which trig function? Which trig function has the O and the A in it, my my friends? Yeah. Tan. By the way, also in C, it's adjacent. And opposite, it's the same question, and that x is the adjacent, that's why I'll just do one of them. Uh, so it's going to be tan of the angle equals opposite over adjacent. This is where the x is on the bottom. You had me last year, you may recall, we learned a bit of a shortcut. When the x is on the bottom, we noticed that it ended up being 10 divided by the trig function, the, the side divided by the trig function when you did your cross multiply, -y, little fancy schmancy, yeah. whatever. That, that should get you there. Now, I threw these on just for nerdishness. You're not very often going to get ones this yucky in physics. This was me as a math nerd. So although I want to spend time going over these, I want to get to today's lesson. So can I say press pause and you can either ask me individually or I'll take them next class because the quiz took a little longer to go over than I planned. All right? If you have it done and some of you did, great. If not, you can still hand it in when I see you Thursday, although really Tuesday of next week because your homework is to study. I did give you two big unit reviews. Those are due on the day of the test on Thursday. So what's, some of you already have handed them in, but the concepts of momentum review, that was this one that had the granny skating on it and the cannon shot, and the big momentum review where I nuked a couple of questions, but that one is also, that's good practice for what you're going to see on the test. <coughs> And having said that, let's move to lesson one then. Introduction to vectors. So this is lesson one, introduction to vectors. Th uh, what we're going to ask ourselves here is, how do we do mathematics with directions if they're not in a nice straight line? If they're in a nice straight line, uh, up and down, north and south, east and west, we've already figured that out. You let one be positive, one be negative. It doesn't matter which one you do. You could, if you wanted to, let down be positive all the time. In fact, in the forces unit, we sometimes did that with our winner minus loser thing. We said, we'll let positive be whichever way is more convenient for us. But what we're really going to ask ourselves is, what if they're not in a nice straight line? What if they're at angles to each other? This year, what if they're at right angles to each other? In physics 12, hey, what if they're at all wonky angles to each other? Uh, cosine law and sine law, if they're not at right angles to each other. So here's my question. Patrick the puppy goes wandering around his neighborhood as seen below. So it looks like he starts on the front porch. Come on. Let's try this again. Didn't want to move. There we go. Looks like he starts on the front porch, and he goes north for a while, then he heads north e uh, east for a while, stops there, stops there. Why is he stopping at the bushes? One can only imagine. Uh, stops there, stops, and it uh, comes to a final stop there. 
So I wrote, notice a series of arrows drawn on the map of a physics teacher's front lawn. Each arrow shows the magnitude, the size, and the direction of a series of successive short little trips made by Patrick the puppy. These arrows showing both magnitude and direction of each of Patrick's displacements are called vectors. We're going to start to symbolize vectors as pictures with arrows. When Patrick reaches his final spot near the car door, how far has he walked since he left the porch? Well, Tara, it depends on what you mean by how far. What's his distance? And you do this in Science 10, and we did this at the beginning of the year, the difference between distance and displacement. What's his difference, uh, sorry, distance? How far did he walk? Well, I think he went three plus two plus four plus four plus two plus four. Because distance is a scalar. It doesn't care about direction. It's really saying, how many steps did you take? So let's write that down here. I think he went three plus two plus four plus four plus two plus 4. Did I miss any? No, nope, I think we're good. What is 3 plus 2 plus 4 plus 4 plus 2 plus 4? Uh, 3 plus 2 is 6 plus 4, 10, 14, 16, uh, 20? 3 Sorry, 3 plus 2 is 5. There's my classic mistake. Plus 4, 9, plus 4, 13, plus 19? Yeah. Woohoo! Okay. Direction? None. What about the displacement? The displacement would be the length of that line right there. How the heck could I figure out the length of that line right there? Well, it looks like that line is made up of Three, and how long would that be, looking at the diagram? Four. I can do Pythagoras to find the magnitude. If I go three squared plus four squared equals x squared, I get x equals five meters. Ah, but that, that is only the uh, magnitude. Displacement needs a direction. I need an angle. They gave me an angle. Can you see it? What's the angle that they gave me? 53 degrees. Now, here's how we would write that. You put an at symbol. Let's make that a little neater so you can see what the heck that is. At. We would say this. at. 53 degrees, west of north, west of north. Say what? See this angle right here? Start out going north, and if you go 53 degrees west of north, West, east of north, isn't it? I did it again. I told you I get north and I get east and west mixed up all the time. Gosh, do it. I may have to re video this lesson this afternoon. We'll see. East of north. I should have just gone like this. Of course, the time I don't is when it comes to bite me. Okay. There are two ways to symbol or indicate a quantity that is a vector quantity. One is to put the arrow above it like I just did. In textbooks, they'll symbolize vector with a bold f font, but to do a bold font when your handwriting doesn't work very well, so we use the little arrow when we're handwriting. Uh, for what it's worth, if only the magnitude of the vector is of importance, they'll use uh, plain italics in a textbook. Again, tough to do when you're handwriting, so we use the arrows notation. Turn the page.
scalars and vectors. If you add three kilograms of sugar to two kilograms of sugar, you'll always end up with five kilograms of sugar because mass is a scalar. If you add three liters of water to two liters of water, you'll get five liters of water. Masses and volumes are added together by the rules of ordinary, ordinary arithmetic because they are scalars. Scalars, scalar quantities have magnitude but no direction. Other scalar quantities include, what are some scalar quantities you have learned this year? Energy? Speed? What else? You learned a bunch. Uh, velocity is a vector. Speed is the scalar, velocity is the vector. You're right, what? Power, because power was energy divided by time. It was scalar divided by scalar. Oh, and by the way, I just gave you a hint, time, the big scalar. However, so three kilograms plus two kilograms, five kilograms. If you add a three meter displacement to a two meter displacement, you might get five as an answer. Three to the right plus two to the right is five to the right. You might get one as an answer. Three to the right plus two to the left is one to the right. Or you could get something in between. Three right and then two up would be about 3.6 up at an angle. As you can see, the resultant displacement depends on the directions of the two vectors as well as their magnitudes. In addition to displacements, other vector quantities include... What are some other vectors we have learned this year? Force. Matt, you just said one earlier. Velocity. Hey, the one that your test is about on Thursday? Momentum, we have to be much more careful. Yes? Any others? Ah, yeah. Acceleration, that's why negative 9.8 if we, right? Other, oh, lots of others, but you're young. All right, thinking question. If we add force vectors of 7 newtons and 4 newtons, what's the maximum force that we can possibly get out of those ones? 11 newtons. What's the minimum force that we can possibly get out of those ones? Think this. 3. You can also get every single value between those by pushing at angles. So instead of uh, 7 to the left or to the right and three, 4 to the left or to the right, you could have the be pushing up at an angle. So vector addition in one dimension, pretty good straightforward. 5 meters east plus 3 meters east is what in your head? 8 meters east. 6.2 newtons to the left plus 6.7 newtons to the right. By the way, that third vector, that answer, represents the sum of the first two vectors, and it's called the resultant. The resultant, so I'll use that term quite often. I'll say, find the resultant. Tara, I know what you're dying to ask. What about in two dimensions? What if they're not all in a nice straight line? Here it is, the point of today's lesson. And we'll probably continue with this when I see you guys again after the test. Adding vectors in two dimensions, we represent vectors with arrows. The first way to add vectors, Jordan, would be to carefully draw them to scale using graph paper, like the dog picture that I gave you on the very first page using a ruler and a protractor, and then carefully measure the length of your vector and using a protractor, measure the angle between them. 
Example, John travels five kilometers west, then eight kilometers north. What's his resulting displacement? We could draw that to scale, or better yet, we could use trig. Here it is in huge bold font in a box. This is the single, the single, the most important rule for vectors. To add two vectors together, we draw them tip to tail. The resultant, which I usually use a capital R for, is the line from the tail of the first vector to the tip of the second vector. How do we add two vectors together, Michael? We draw them tip to tail. How do we add two vectors together, Michael? We draw them. How do we add two vectors together, Jordan? We draw them. How do we add two vectors together, Tara? We draw them. How do we add two vectors together, Dylan? We draw them. Caught you on your phone, I know. Tara, how do we add two vectors together? Draw them. Dylan, how do we add two vectors together? Draw them. No. Riley, how do we add two vectors together? Draw them. How do we add two vectors together? Draw them. Tip to tail. 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 Let's try example four here. Okay. Uh, example four said John travels five kilometers west, then eight kilometers north. I've learned my lesson. I saw directions. I'm drawing a compass. What's the first displacement that they gave me? Five west. So I'm going to draw that, and I'm going to try and draw this roughly to scale, roughly. So 5 west plus, what was the second di uh, displacement, Riley, that they gave me? From example 4 on the previous page. That's why it says let's try example 4 here. 8 north. Eight north. Uh, I just drew 5 west about that long. I'll draw 8 north longer, not quite twice as long. I, I want to be roughly to scale. I like it so that my picture doesn't scare me if I find an answer that doesn't match my picture. 8 north, about like that. By the way, Dylan, I'm coming back to you for the rest of the units. So are you ready? How do you add two vectors together? Draw them. So here's what this means. Equals. There's five. There's the tip. The tail of my second one starts on the tip. There's eight. That's how you add vectors together. You, you have to draw a picture. It's kind of fun. Ah, can you read to me, Riley, from the box on the previous page, the final sentence? So the big bold face box on the previous page, what was the final sentence there? This is important, folks. From the tail of the first vector to the tip of the second. Tail of the first to tip of the second. Uh, there's the resultant R, uh, which makes sense pointing in that direction. If you go left and up, the resultant should be left up-ish. Okay. Let's find the magnitude. Hey, this is a lovely right angle here. I think the resultant magnitude is going to be r squared equals 5 squared plus 8 squared. Can you quickly do the Pythagoras on your calculators? 5 squared plus 8 squared and then square root. Nine point four kilometers. Now that's only the magnitude. All vectors have what? Both magnitude and direction. Where's my direction? Look up. This is what kids generally have trouble with. Starting from with my first vector, I draw a little curvy arrow. That's my angle right there. That's going to be angle theta. How can I find that angle? Well, that 8 
opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse. That 5, adjacent, or hypotenuse. Which trig function, oh, pray tell? Tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. How do I find an angle using my calculator? Inverse button. So I'll write that in my notes so you know what we did. We said that theta is the inverse tan of 8 divided by 5. Can you find that angle for me, please? Sorry? 58? So here's how we write it. At 58 degrees, that gives us the magnitude of the angle, but not the direction of the angle. And this is what kids have trouble with. So once you write that 58, look up. It's going to be a what of what. It's going to be like a north of south, an east of west, a what of what. And here's how you get that. Some kids get it right away. Notice the first vector that we drew, the blue one. What direction was that? West. west. And then to get red, I head upwards. I get to get to my red vector, I head upwards. It is going to be north of west. That's how I got to that resultant. Because I go west and I go, I go west, I go north of west to get to it. That's how, that's how it's been done for oh, about a thousand years, actually. You're learning some navigational vocabulary. If you ever watch some of the old sailing movies like Master and Commander or some of the ones that have come out, you'll hear the sailors, you know, we're nor nor by northwest. That's they're saying they're north of northwest. Northwest is 45 degrees. You're north of 45. There's all sorts of sailor vocabulary. We're just going to use angles and what of what. Ah, there is a second possible answer. Andrew, you could have drawn the 8 first and then drawn the 5. You could have drawn the 8 first and then drawn the 5. If you had done that, you would have gotten something that looked like this. Come on. Is it going to open? Works better if it actually opens the program when I say you would have got something that looks like this. There we go. So if you drew the 8 first and then the 5, now it opens you'd still get the same magnitude, which was uh, 9.4. But you would have found this angle here. This angle, Perry, would be west of north, because you started out going north, and then you went west of north to get to there. That's why the west comes first. And its magnitude, I can even tell you, Elijah, what did you get for your angle? What was the, what, what did we get, 50 what? This is going to be uh, 32 degrees. 90 minus the complement, whatever you want to call it. There's always going to be two different answers for the angles, and I'll always take both. I generally write whatever they told me first, and then what, draw whatever they told me second, second. Don't worry if that didn't make sense to you. It will shortly. Let's do some more. Example 5. Force 1 is 10 newtons due east. Force 2 is 6, new six newtons due south. Find the resultant. All right. Sam, what's the first force they gave me? Direction? That would look about like that plus. What's the second force they gave me, Sam? I'll draw it a little more than half as long as the 10 because 6 is a little more than half as big as 10. About like that. Dylan, my friend, how do I add two vectors together? Draw them. So it's going to look like this. 10 plus 6. Resultant is always from the tail of the first to the tip of the second. You know what? The resultant is going to be there's force resultant, FR. And conveniently, there's a lovely right angle. 
Now, if you can do the Pythagoras all on your calculator, I say great. What I would look for, Nathan, in terms of uh, writing is something like this. I would probably like to see this somewhere, 10 squared plus 6 squared. What's the magnitude of the resultant force? 10 squared plus 6 squared square root. 11.6? Uh, Newtons at go back to the corner where your vector started. Angle is going to go there. That's theta. Not, not where it ends up. It's where it came from. That's where your direction is defined as. By the way, drawing that is going to be what of what? South of north, east of west, what of what? Okay, it's going to be, I can leave it, I'll leave a space for the degrees. That's going to be south of east. That's 6, opposite adjacent to hypotenuse. And Mr. Duick, will it always be tangent? It'll most often, but not always, be tangent. Not always, but a lot of the time. Uh, it's going to be tangent of mystery angle equals opposite over adjacent. What is the mystery angle on your calculator? Make sure you know how to do this on your calculator. Sorry? 30 degrees? Even? 30 point what? 30 point nine six? Okay, that's not 30 degrees. Is it 30 point nine six, Andrew? Yeah, it's 30.96. So I'm going to go with 31 degrees because, you know, I can round off. Uh, or, or uh, 90 minus 31, 59 degrees east of south would also work. That would be uh, this angle right here if you had drawn it that way. A plane is flying due north at 132 meters per second. A crosswind is blowing due east at 44 meters per second. How fast is the plane traveling with respect to the Earth, then? It's traveling north. It's being pushed side. It's, it's moving at an angle. So this is some of the math that they do when they're doing navigation for airplanes, except rarely is the crosswind at a lovely right angle. We'll get to the more realistic stuff later. OK. I think what we need to do, Dylan, here is we need to add 132 meters per second north plus 44 meters per second east. Dylan, how do we add two vectors together? Draw them. So it's going to look like this. 132 plus, I think 44 would be about that long compared to 132. About a third as long. Because 4 times 3 is 120, 40 times, roughly. How do I add two vectors together, Dylan? Okay, so it's going to look like this. 132, 44, and my resultant is going to be that. There's my velocity resultant. Try this one on your own. I'll do it up here.
Yeah? No? Yeah. Okay. Generally, Sam, I find kids are good at finding the magnitude. It's Pythagoras, which you've been doing since grade like eight or seven. And they get the tip to tail thing after I keep picking on the same kid over and over and over every, so it'll be you this year, sorry. But they, they, that drums it into their brain. Generally, I find kids are pretty good at finding the angle. What they struggle with is the what of what. That's weird. north of south, east of west, what of what. In fact, one of my best students ever years ago, a kid named Dylan, a uh, basketball player, uh, he could never figure it out. He actually ended up memorizing every single combination of what of what and just did it by brute force memorization. Oh, that's a way out. There's, I think, 16 different combinations. It takes a bit of doing. Um, that will practice for the next few days. Okay. What's your homework? Well, part one is study for the test. But I'm going to give you a couple of questions here. Uh, number one, that's in a nice straight line, I think. Gravity down, and I think friction would be pointing upwards if you're falling downwards. So that's going to be a straight winner minus loser. Uh, do, 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 do. Number three is good. Sure, we'll try number two. See if you can figure out number four. Now, number four is uh, adding three forces. Here's your hint. Add the north-south ones, because that we can do using physics 11 so far, winner minus loser, and then get that answer and add it to the 50 newtons to the east tip to tail. If not, I'll talk about these next class. You got about 11 minutes. You can work on studying, work on the momentum reviews, or you can work on these four questions. However, what you can't do is get your telephones back, your cell phones back. <laughs>